Hello everyone and welcome to the Animal's House. Today we are going to talk about propane gas pressures, propane gas piping, and we're going to talk a little bit about some propane appliances that I have out in the shed. Let's take a look. All right, everyone, so here's a couple of baselines for what we're talking about today. We're talking about propane gas, not natural gas. So in propane gas, you're gonna have a tank outside and where you have uh, gallons of liquid propane stored in the tank. Uh, in the shed, what I'm looking at for units is I have a gas boiler up on the wall, that's 80,000 BTUs. Then I've got a forced air gas furnace, that's 60,000 BTUs. Then out in the basketball court, I'm looking at 125,000 BTU forced air unit heater. And then recently I added a 150,000 BTU hanging unit heater. So before we get too deep into this, I wanna talk real quick about some basis uh, for gas pressure units of measurement. So in general, one PSI of uh, pressure is equal to 28 inches water column approximately. So, um, you know, 14 inches water column would be approximately one half PSI. And for natural gas appliances, uh, before the gas valve, you're looking at five to seven inches water column inlet pressure, and then three and a half out for propane gas, again, which is what we're using today. You're looking at 11 to 13 inches water column inlet pressure uh, is recommended, and then 10 inches water column out is what is used on most gas uh, prime appliances on propane. Now, keep in mind, that is a recommendation or I'm just telling you that that's kind of a general guide. Obviously each appliance, you gotta to refer to the instruction books, the engineering and figure out what it needs. So to measure uh, inches water column, you basically need a manometer. And when you look at the gas valve, there's ports like pressure ports before and after the gas valve. So anything before the gas valve is inlet pressure. Anything after the gas valve would be outlet pressure. Now that we have some baselines for measurement, we'll talk about outside, we've got our propane tanks, and these things are gonna be over 100 PSI. It kinda all depends on the temperature. A 90 degree summer day, it's gonna be probably uh, you know, well over 100 PSI, and then on colder days in the winter might be a little bit less. But that is going to vary, but there is a first stage regulator on those tanks that knocks that pressure down to eight to 10 PSI. And then there's a second stage regulator at the building that knocks that eight to 10 PSI pressure down to 11 to 13. And it can be adjusted by a little spring that's in there. Then you go inside the building. Uh, gas piping, I drew a little map here. I've got the inlet coming in by the meter and uh, then the, the piping branches off to the boiler and then the furnace and then the unit heater and then the, um, the bigger unit heater out in the shed. And then also over on the lower right side, I didn't arrow that, I'm going off to a stove. So let's take a look at where I'm at right now with my current installation before I changed anything. I'm gonna show you some of the pressure baselines so we can understand why we had a problem here and why I addressed it. Here we are out in the shed. I'm taking a look at gas pressures here. I'm starting with all the appliances off and I'm sitting at 11.11 .11 inches water column. Then what happens is we turn on the uh, boiler and we're gonna drop down to about 10.6 inches water column. Then we're gonna get into having the forced air 60K furnace come on. That drops me down to about 10.5. Then the next appliance that comes on is the shed 125K unit heater, and that drops me down to about 9.8. And this is where I start to see the limits of my system here because uh, I can see that the regulator is not, regulator and the gas piping combined is not keeping up with the demand here. So we're down in the 9.8 uh, area. And then when I turn on the big unit here, here 150, I drop all the way down to 7.42 inches water column. And so this regulator and this gas piping is not capable of maintaining the recommended pressure of 11 to 13 throughout the process of these units running. And that's a problem, so let's talk about why. So the reason this is a problem in appliances is that typical pressure drop through a normal gas valve is right around one inch water column. Uh, my heater is designed for an outlet pressure of 10 inches water column. So again, the recommendation for inlet pressure is 11 to 13. Now, if I am 
coming in at 7.42, by the time I get to the manifold, I'm near 6.5, which means that my current piping system with 6.5 inches water column outlet pressure is 35% below what it's engineered for. Okay, so that means when they engineered and made everything work to, to kind of, you know, have the appliance work for many years, they needed 10 inches water column. But if you have low gas pressure, you're gonna reduce the heat exchanger temperature, potentially cause condensation to form inside the steel tubes, and you guessed it, it's gonna rust, and you will have premature failure of that appliance. So I have to address this problem and before I have problems with appliances in the future. Let's take a look at the current piping system. Right now I have uh, our little map here. You can see anything that's in yellow is half inch pipe, blue is three quarter inch pipe, and then the pink is gonna be one inch pipe. So I currently had the entire system piped in three quarter inch, except for uh, those two, like the boiler and the, the furnace was half inch. And um, where I have a problem, you'll see once we start talking about the national pipe code is my main leg before everything starts branching off is undersized. So I grabbed the national uh, gas piping code. I found the undiluted propane 11 inches water column page. And uh, basically I was able to determine using the longest pipe method, how I should size that gas piping throughout the system. So with the longest pipe method, you basically highlight whatever line is greater than your longest pipe run. My longest pipe run is 38 feet in the system, so I highlight the 40 line. This is going to mean that um, these are pretty much all the numbers I need to look at. So in that system, any appliance that has 137,000 BTUs or less beyond that point in the piping system, I can have one half inch gas pipe going there and then any group or of appliances or or single appliance i guess that would have less than 287,000 btus of load beyond that point in the piping system i could use three quarter inch pipe and then uh, one inch is going to be 541. national pipe code does recommend a 20 percent kind of buffer so um, basically if we look at the map in my system here all i really needed to change was the main line going from the meter up to where it branches off to the bigger unit heaters. That line was three quarter inch and now it is one inch. And that is uh, exactly accurate with what the national code asks for. Another thing is again, the inlet pressure was capable of being like 11 to 13. And I max I could get was 11.11. .11. So I did change the regulator and I set my inlet pressure uh, basically at 12.65, so I'm a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit higher than that 11.11 .11 starting point. Here we are now again, we've got the new piping installed. We are ready to test it out. So before anything is running, I'm sitting at 12.65 and basically using the exact same test method that I was using before. Uh, I've got 12.65 coming in now out at the appliances. Then I'm going to have that boiler come on and I drop down to uh, 11.9 and then that 60k furnace comes on in uh, low stage of heat that's 11.85 i dropped to and then when i get that first unit heater on for 125 i drop down to uh, 11.4 so i'm still within that 11 to 13 range and then uh, i bring on the 150k and i do drop down pretty decently to uh, nine initially but that does recover within about two minutes that regulator recovers back up all the way to 11 and i measured it at the outlet uh, pressure tap and i have got exactly 10 inches water column going to my manifold now uh, with every single appliance in the system running so that is pretty much absolutely case in point of you know why the national gas code exists kind of how to interpret it and uh, you know how my system was underperforming due to the incorrect installation and then uh, what steps I took to correct it and uh, the difference that it made. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and hit me up with questions if you want, but I really like to refer you to a professional at you know a heating and cooling place or otherwise you know kind of um, inspectors and things like that. I, I'm not national gas code. I'm just telling you how I interpreted it. Um, but otherwise, if you like the video, don't forget to click for me. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next episode of Animal's House.